Today, as we continue our discussion of processing, I'm going to be talking about the mouse and um, how we locate the position of the mouse on the screen. Now, this is important. It's important almost every time we're doing something in a web browser, it's important. We have to click in boxes, for example. And so it's absolutely necessary to know where the mouse is on the screen uh, as we're navigating our way using a web browser, for instance. Okay, now, we'll do a couple of simple examples, and then um, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll move on, because I, I think you'll get the idea, hopefully, without too much trouble. Okay, now, the first example here is called Find the Cursor. Okay, and the idea with this example is we want to identify if the cursor, which is drawn here and here, is to the left of this vertical line or to the right of the vertical line. And we're going to make the line move toward the cursor, wherever the cursor happens to be. So in order to do that, we need to position, uh, we need to know what the position of the cursor is. Okay, so let's, uh, and then the cursor, the position, is going to be dependent on the cursor, on the position of the mouse. Okay, so let's look at this piece of code. I've already copied it over here. And let's examine this a bit and see what it's telling us. Okay, we set up our graphics window, and we set the variable x to be half of the width of the window. Okay, now void draw. Uh, remember, uh, let me uh, come up here. I, I missed this. We set the variable x to be a floating point variable. Set the variable offset to be an integer, and we initialize offset to the value of 10. And then we have a void setup where we set up the size of the window, and then we set up x to be width over 2. Now remember, width is a predefined value in processing. It's simply the width of the graphics window. Okay, now void draw. Void draw executes by default 60 times a second. Um, we're going to set um, background to be 204, a gray level, the background of the window. Now, what we're going to do right here is we're going to look at the x position of the mouse and where it is compared to this x value. And um, this x value initially is set to be width over 2. OK, if mouse x is greater than a, a, the x value, we're going to increase the x value. So x value, it turns out, will give us the x position of the line. So if mouse, which is this point right here, the way, we, the way we're going to set it up, if, if x is to the left of the line, we're going to move this to the right. And if um, x, so that's what the situation is here. We have the mouse x is greater than uh, x, which means that this value is to the left of mouse x. And in that case, we increase the value of little x here. So we're going to be moving this over as we increase the value. Now, also inside this region, we're going to set offset equal to negative 10. So we'll, we'll, we'll see that comes in play a little bit later in the, in the code. Here, we look at mouse x. If mouse x is to the left of the position of the line, then we're going to be moving the line to the left. And then here we set offset equal to 10. Okay, so what's going on here with this? What are we going to draw? Well, we're going to draw four lines. Let's look over here. What are these four lines? There's this vertical line, and then there's the uh, arrow, which has three lines. This line, this line, and this line. So those are four lines. You see we have four lines right here. The first line here is the vertical line. It's going from position x, y equals 0, to position x, height. 
So that's the vertical line. And then these three lines are these three lines right here. And we're going to pick a point, with mouse X, mouse Y, which will be this point right here. Mouse X, mouse Y will be one point on each of the lines. And then the other point depends on the line. The other point is going to be mouse X plus offset, the X position, and the Y position is mouse Y minus 10. And then for, uh, so, and then a second line has the same uh, X position. So if this is mouse X plus offset, this will also have an X position of mouse X plus offset. And then we go to mouse Y plus 10, which is this Y value down here. So we, these two are this line and this line. And then we have this line, which is mouse X, mouse Y as this point. And then we set the other point on the line has an X position of mouse X plus offset times three, and then mouse Y. So that will be this one uh, right in here, uh, depending on whether, okay, depending, offset can be positive or negative, and that will depend on whether the arrow is pointing this way or this way. Okay, so let me encourage you here, you know, if you want to really understand this, Go and examine the code, and the things that you don't quite catch, change some variable values, and see how that changes what gets produced when we execute the code. So for now, let me execute the code so you can see what's going on. Okay, here you see the position of the mouse initializes always in the upper left-hand corner, and you saw how the vertical line moved to that position. Now as I move over here, the vertical line moves to the right, and then the line stops when we get there. Here, here. So the vertical line follows the tip of the arrow, which is defined by the position of the mouse. Okay, so that uh, is a simple example of determining the mouse position uh, in processing. Okay, let's go to another code, piece of code. This one is uh, a little bit more complex, at least conceptually, I think. Um, bounds of a circle. What we want to try to do here is determine if in a circle, in a window, is the mouse positioned inside the circle or outside the circle. If the mouse is inside the circle, we're going to grow the radius of the circle. Okay, so, okay, how are we going to do that? Well, let's look at this code right in here. That This code describes that. First, let me run it and show you, and then I'll explain it. So I'm going to run the code. There's the circle. I bring the mouse in here. Nothing's happening, nothing's happening. And I'm going to bring the mouse inside the circle, and bingo, it changes color, and the circle grows. Okay, so, so what are we doing here? Initialize uh, three variables. Integer x is equal to 120, integer y is 60, integer radius is equal to 12. That'll be the starting radius of the circle the size of the window, and then ellipse mode. Ellipse mode is radius. Now, let me ask you this question. Is the default ellipse mode radius? An easy way to check that would be to comment out this statement and then run the program. Now notice we get that. So it appears to be very similar. Not exactly though. What happened? Let's go back and look at this. So you see here, the circle's a little bit bigger. Okay, so ellipse mode default is not radius. You may have to go in now and review what is the ellipse mode radius. Now, uh, you can either you know, look in the, in the textbook here, or you can go into your browser 
and you can do type in processing ellipse mode radius if you certainly you've figured out how to use Google in finding answers to questions you might have in any number of classes so ellipse mode right here explains ellipse mode this is a Khan Academy uh, I don't know that I want that let's do ellipse mode language processing here we go so this is this section here is describing ellipse mode I'll lead you to uh, to look at that you have ellipse mode radius ellipse mode center ellipse mode corner and so on okay now let me get out of here okay now so we said ellipse mode to radius now what are we doing here void draw execute 60 times a second we set the background to be a gray level 204 now what we want to do is we if we put the mouse in the circle we want to measure the distance between the tip of the mouse and the center of the circle if that distance is less than the radius of the circle we'll say that the mouse is inside the circle that's all there is to it so now we're going to do float D notice that we define float D inside the draw function that means if we tried to do something with float D outside if we tried to use it outside the draw function we will get an error okay float D is going to be the distance the the position of the mouse is mouse X mouse Y XY position the center of the circle is XY okay now here let me bring this down like this so we're going to look at this distance here between this XY value and this XY value and distance uses the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between these two points this point and this point okay now if D is less than is less than the radius so that means the mouse is inside the circle what we're going to do is we're going to increment increase the radius of the circle it, radius plus plus okay now then we're going to also fill the circle with uh, zero which is all black and then if the radius is not in in the circle so we might want to you know, indent this here and you know something like this let me pull this back because I view that as part of the if statement okay so what do we have here <clears throat> we have if D is less than radius we increase radius okay radius plus plus that's increasing by what by one okay then we're going to fill the circle with zero there let me do that black if this isn't true then we fill it with white and we're not changing the radius here okay so let's run this again okay notice that if I pull the mouse out of the circle the circle switches back to white and stops increasing in size okay pull it back in it increases pull it out it stops okay so that's what the else statement does it stops the circle from growing and changes the circle to white okay so 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 much with that now if we wanted to do the same thing with a rectangle it would be a little bit more complicated why because we can define a circle like this with one parameter uh, 
the radius. Well, I guess we have to know the center of the circle too, but uh, knowing only the, the radius of the circle, we can determine here uh, if that mouse is inside the circle or not. With a rectangle, we have to know the x and y bounds of the rectangle. Uh, so we have to know the smallest and largest value of x and the smallest and largest value of y. And we have to determine, does the position of the mouse lie inside those two ranges? So let's look at that. Let me don't save. Now, here we go. And um, let me move down. Okay, bounds of a rectangle. Let's just read this and then we'll look at the code. We use another approach to test whether the cursor is inside a rectangle. We make four separate tests to check if the cursor is on the correct side of each edge of the rectangle. Then we compare each test, and if they're all true, we know the cursor is inside. This is illustrated in this figure here. Each step is simple, but it looks complicated when it's put all together. Okay, so that's what I have right here. Now, let me... Okay, so... Let's look at this. Let me first run the code. There it is right here. I pull the mouse inside and the rectangle just changes black. We're not changing the size of the rectangle. We go out, goes back to white. Okay, simple enough. Okay, what am I doing here? Integer x equals 80, integer y equals 80. So that's typically going to be x equals 80, y equals 80 the upper left-hand corner of the rectangle. Then the next two values are the width and the height of the rectangle. So width is 80, height is 60. We set the size of our box here. Now we do our void draw, set the background to be gray. And um, so notice here in void draw, we are redrawing, okay, every time through draw. Remember the reason for doing that, I hope. Now, so we're going to check the x values and the y values. So first off, we look at the position of the mouse, mouse x, and we say, is it greater than little x? Little x is the left-hand boundary of the rectangle. The right-hand boundary is x, plus width. So we look at is little x smaller, I mean sorry, is the, the x position of the mouse greater than little x and then this in processing in an if statement is how we do an and. So we're doing a logical and here. What we're doing is we're saying if this is true and this is true so those are the two tests to determine the x position of the mouse. And if this is true, in other words, is y greater than this boundary? And if y is less than this boundary? So we have four tests here. x greater than this, x less than this, y greater than this, y less than this. If all four of those tests are true, then we change the color of the box. So remember, we, this is the first time we've discussed this. A double ampersand in processing is a logical and. So this whole if statement is checking. Is this true? And is this true? And is this true? And is this true? And if all four of these statements are true, so that means the mouse is inside the rectangle, we change the color of the rectangle to black. But if one of these isn't true, that's executed in the else statement, then we fill the box with white, okay, and, um, and then we redraw the box. Why do we have to redraw it? If we don't redraw it, it won't, uh, the box won't redraw and fill with white. Let's 
try that. Let me comment this out. Let me run. So, okay. And um, so the box here isn't drawn at all uh, there. Okay. So, like I have said um, before, that um, I want you to... So, remember, we first draw the box. Uh, when we first draw the box, the mouse is in the upper left-hand corner, and it's drawn as white. Okay, now it's there, it's in. Now when I pull it out, the else applies, and um, then it's drawn as black. So notice here, we only actually have one draw command for the rectangle. This is representing a certain efficiency in the code. And uh, so you might want to think about that too, figure out why we get by there with one rectangle draw. So this code might be a little bit more involved than is initially apparent. Okay, um, with that, then this is uh, that's everything I have to say in this video. I'll see you next time.